On the streets of D.C., I asked people to describe Israel's influence on American politics. I think it's very strong influence. I think, I mean, it's, they're very closely tied together. Israel and America has a great connection, so I think that uh, we should support Israel. And uh, we have for over the centuries, over the time, you know, they're a good partner with us. I would say just very powerful. Uh, I would say oil um, or something of that sort. But like I said, I believe that uh, anytime America has uh, troops or uh, any interaction overseas, it's probably because of their interest. And mainly, the end is probably going to be some way to profit America or uh, people involved. Strong. So. Uh, well, I'll go to New York. <laughs> uh, go to Florida. Um, you have, you know, strong, very strong Jewish populations there, and uh, they are influenced by Israel. I just believe that uh, Israel has uh, uh, an influence on America's military and also on America's uh, um, economic goals. That you know is. It, 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 it's very, very, very affluent in our country. We need uh, a stable position in the Middle East, and uh, also we need allies. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure that we need Israel. Next, I asked our experts, what is Israel's influence on American politics and elections? Extraordinary, uh, unimaginable, especially because there's nobody on the other side, you see. There isn't uh, uh, large organizations that will sponsor the visit of, uh, of Bashar al-Assad if he comes to this country. By the way, uh, I, have, I have met with that man uh, some years ago, a very interesting person. As you may know, he's a British-educated ophthalmologist who has a sense of humor. If, if we had more time, I'd go into this. But uh, if Bashar al-Assad comes here, he's not going to get the kind of reception that Mr. Netanyahu will get. How many members of the Congress and of the executive branch will be present for his speech? Okay, I don't have to answer that question. A lot of them. So the, power, the lobby is very, very powerful. American Jews in general are not just limited to the Israel issues. They care about economic justice and women's rights and environmental integrity um, and international human rights and uh, global poverty and addressing global poverty across the globe, supporting um, uh, the new democracies spreading throughout the uh, Middle East. All of these are a vital concern to the American Jewish community and they're going to judge any member of Congress and any president of the United States on how those elected officials do on the broad range of issues. There is no American president, including this one, that has ever took a firm stance against Israel on anything and have declared themselves to be the permanent allies of Israel in the Middle East. I mean, the classic case is right now the United States is bombing Libya every day, but has turned a blind eye to the human rights abuses, uh, the outright taking of the Palestinian territories, the taking of the Palestinian lands. There's not even as much as a statement condemning Israel. And so uh, it, uh, the, the, what they call the Jewish community or the Zionist or Israel has always have a heavy, heavy influence over the United States Congress and the presidency of the United States. Is the Jonathan Pollard case likely to affect President Obama's presidential campaign? I don't think that any support for President Obama in the American Jewish community is going to be affected by what the president does on this issue or what Israel does um, on behalf of Pollard um, regarding this issue. Americans care about a broad range, American Jews care about a broad range of domestic policy and foreign policy issues. He's going to be judged on what his views are on the economy, on health care, on the environment, on international uh, uh, human rights, on the fight against terrorism across the uh, globe. That's, those are going to be the issues that he'll uh, be judged on and his general support for Israel. And I think on any objective uh, grounds, uh, this is somebody who's been a staunchly pro-Israel president. So um, uh, I don't see this issue affecting it. If this comes up at all, it may be part of a broader agreement on the peace process and accommodations to on settlements and other things that this would be part of a package and would be a piece of um, in a broader thing. It will not be a determinative factor in U.S.-Israel relations nor in American Jewish support for the president. 
When it comes to Israel and politics, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, commonly known as APAC, is America's leading pro-Israel lobby. APAC works with both Democratic and Republican political leaders to enact public policy that strengthens the U.S.-Israel relationship. According to the New York Times, APAC is the most important organization affecting America's relationship with Israel. I asked our experts to describe APAC's relationship with President Obama. APAC, as far as my research goes, is directly writes or advises and is key in writing any legislation that pertains to Israel that is in the Congress. And, and that so the legislation that the U.S. Congress may come out to uh, that may sponsor, that may support Israel or, or, or condemn violence against Israel, from my understanding, it comes from APAC and it comes directly from the Israeli government. From what I have researched, there's no more influential lobbyist group in America than APAC. And so it is fair to say that the Congress and the President and the politicians in America, either through APAC's influence or through the propaganda that is whipped against anyone that comes against Israel, all of them ultimately come to bow to the Israeli foreign policy. The uh, APAC is concerned about the special U.S.-Israel relationship in American support for Israel, financial support for Israel, uh, military support for Israel, um, uh, etc. On that level, I think the president has a very strong record. There are some in, in, in American Jews are divided between doves, of which my segment of the American Jewish community, the largest segment, the Reformed Jewish uh, uh, community, that is a theologically liberal segment of American Jewry, fits predominantly in that category. And there are people who are hawks. A lot has to do with how much you trust the Palestinians to really live in peace with Israel if they got their own state and the steps they would take to guarantee Israel's uh, uh, security. Um, uh, there, so there is a division there. Uh, Almost everyone, whether a dove or hawk, supports the APAC position of support for Israel, that America, it's in America's interests and values to be supportive of Israel. Well, it's not just APAC, of course. It's the Zionist Organization of America. It's the uh, Saban Institute. It's the Association of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations. It's uh, Hadassah. I mean, on and on and on and on. There are an awful lot of groups whose names you might not recognize and whose names don't reveal any orientation necessarily, but they're all very actively supporting Israel. For example, as you may know, uh, contributions to the building of Israeli settlements are tax deductible, whereas the American government is opposed to the expansion of Israeli settlements. Okay, so something is at work there, you see. And uh, most people aren't paying much attention anyway. This is America. They say in the world that if you speak three languages, you're trilingual, two languages, you're bilingual, one language, and you're American. And Americans, you know, don't pay a great deal of attention to the rest of the world, and the media doesn't feed this because if Lindsay Lohan's imprisonment, you know, will take over the fact that the government of X country has fallen, you know, or Charlie, for goodness sake, Sheen. So this is what Americans pay most attention to, or the sports teams and all of that. And if you talk about the Middle East, I feel very confident when I introduce myself to American audiences as a Middle East expert, because unlike most Americans, I know where it is. And most Americans don't really know where Idaho is, let alone you know Syria or Lebanon. Take it one step farther. What percentage of Americans are aware of the fact that when the French colonial empire included Syria, they sliced off part of Syria and made it into Lebanon? If you know this, you can begin to understand why Syrians look at Lebanon differently than we do. And Kuwait was part of Iraq until the British cut that off. You know, imperialism has left its mark. Many feel as if there's an imbalance in this American-Israeli relationship. I asked Dr. Shabazz what can be done about this. I think we need people that will stand up and challenge the fear factor in challenging the Zionists to show them that this alleged all uh, that that this alleged 
power that they have is not all-encompassing, that it will not destroy you. I see myself as a smaller example. I've been persecuted by the Anti-Defamation League, by Abraham Foxman for many years. I will continue to hold my current stance, and I have not been destroyed by God's grace. I think the President of the United States, Barack Obama, can be free of the Jewish, so-called Jewish lobby or Zionist influence if he wants to. If he desires to, he could be free overnight, for it is Israel that depends on America for billions of dollars. It is Israel that depends on America for credibility, not the other way around. And so it is merely a desire of the president wanting to stand up and to be the man that he said he would be, a man for change, a man for fairness, a man that would not kowtow to certain uh, minority or small uh, lobbyist groups. And so it's really all on him. If he wants to stand up and be a man and have a better world and create better, better relations between the peoples, then President Obama can do it. Israel is America's strongest ally in the Middle East. It receives billions of dollars in aid every year. Yet in spite of all this, it still spied on America. When Jonathan Pollard was caught, he rushed to the Israeli embassy, but they kicked him out. In spite of all of this international intrigue, nothing has changed between the relationships of Israel and America. Our experts agreed that the Israeli lobby is very influential over American politics. APAC's goal is to strengthen the relationship between Israel and America by any means necessary. Does this include negative attack ads and political campaigns? Was it a threat by Rabbi Metzger to say that if President Obama does not release convicted spy Jonathan Pollard, that he won't get elected in the next presidential campaign? You decide. For Press TV in Washington, I'm Nisa Islam.